This is gonna be an in-depth and very detailed video, a part two of a three-part engine rebuild series on your 1992 to 2004 Kawasaki KX250 engine. Stay tuned. In part two of this engine rebuild series, we're gonna be talking about the right side of the engine, getting the shifting mechanism installed with the shift shaft, the idler gear, the kickstart mechanism, the primary gear, the full Henson clutch install, the Boyson water pump impeller, as well as the left side of the engine, including the ignition and the flywheel. So we're gonna start with the shift shaft and the uh, shift shaft mechanism here. Make sure you've got everything lined up. You got the shift drum cam and the bolt, the spring, washer, and then the rocker arm here and the nut, as well as the seal for the other side of the engine for the shift shaft. First, you're gonna make sure that the pin is installed on the back of the shift drum here. There are two holes, but it will only fit in the larger hole. Next up, install the little washer here on the stopper pin. Then you'll install the rocker arm and spring at the same time. So this flat end of the spring is gonna butt up into the engine on the right side here. And then the hook faces out front. It's gonna grab into that little notch. And then also the roller here is gonna face toward the engine. Then you've got the collar here, the shoulder side faces in. So put that through the rocker arm and then you can go ahead and get the nut screwed on there. And then this will take a torque of 78 inch pounds. Taking a closer look, that's how the flat side of the spring should appear in the case. And just go ahead and do a quick test, making sure the spring returns it to the original position. Next up, you're gonna install the shift drum cam. You're gonna line up the pin on the shift drum with the hole in the shift drum cam. Take a pick and pry back the stopper lever. And then you can position that shift drum in there. Then the shift drum cam bolt, put a good amount of blue Loctite on that thing. Get it installed. Turn the bolt all the way to the right until the shift drum locks. And then get it torqued down to 17 foot-pounds. And then after, you can just move that shift drum back into its normal slot. Okay, then before throwing the shift shaft in, what we want to do is just make sure this return spring pin is nice and tight. And if it's not, make sure you take it off, reapply Loctite to it, and then tighten it down to 31 foot-pounds. So before installing the shift shaft, we're gonna make sure that we got the shift shaft seal installed on the other side of the engine. So we're just gonna apply a little bit of assembly lube on the seal and put a little bit on the inside too. Place that on the case. And then I've got a size 16 socket, which is the same diameter of the seal. And then we'll go ahead and gently get that tapped in. Next up, we got the shift shaft, making sure the spring is on there correctly. And then this collar here is on the outside, as well as the collar sitting on the shaft on the inside. What we're gonna do is apply a generous amount of assembly lube on that shaft. And then you're gonna install the shaft into the engine and then install the return spring pin right through the center of that return spring there. Next up, we'll install the idler gear here. Go ahead and apply a liberal amount of assembly lube onto the end of that transmission shaft there. The idler gear has a shouldered side that you see here and an unshouldered side. The shoulder side is gonna be installed facing in and then you can get the circlip installed. Next, we'll move on to the Kickstarter assembly. So we've got the ratchet guide right here. Prepare the bolt with some blue Loctite. The bent end is gonna face up. The hole is gonna go where the pin is and then you'll screw that screw in and then get it torqued down to 78 inch pounds. So next is installing the Kickstarter assembly. Don't be afraid to apply a generous amount of assembly lube and then get the, this end of the ratchet assembly installed behind the ratchet guide. And then you can drag that pin all the way around and get it installed in the hole just like that. And then don't forget the tiny washer that'll slide right onto the kickstart shaft. Throw a little bit more assembly lube on the end of that kickstarter shaft as well. You can even throw some on the gears. So what we can do now is check to make sure it's shifting properly. What you can do is throw the shifter on the other side of the shift shaft real quick. And then with, while you're turning the transmission with one hand, you can use the other hand to shift up. So right now you can see in the slot here, the little slot in the shift drum cam, that is actually neutral. And the way you tell it's neutral is that you can hold one of the shafts and twist the other one. So I'm using my left hand here to hold the counter shaft. And with my right hand, I'm twisting the main shaft. And you can see how I'm twisting the main shaft and the counter shaft isn't moving. So you can continue moving through the gears by spinning the main shaft here. That's second, third, fourth, and fifth. Kind of went a little quick there, and then you can shift down as well from fifth to fourth, 
fourth to third, third to second, second to neutral if we can. Now it's not going to be, it's not going to shift like butter like it normally would on the bike. Oh, and that just went all the way down to first, but then you can just do a little half click up and back into neutral. And there we go. Next up is getting the primary drive gear installed. You can see how there's a chamfered side here. The other side has no chamfer. Chamfered side on the inside faces out. And then same with the water pump drive gear. There's a chamfered side right here and that's gonna be facing out as well. And then you're gonna throw the new circlip on there. So we got some fresh Hinson clutch fibers ready for the rebuild. Now what we're gonna do, these need to soak in oil for 12 hours before installing them onto the bike. So I've got this plastic bag. I'm just gonna throw some Maxima MTL oil that I'm gonna be using in the bike into the bag. And then we'll just throw all the plates in there. And what this is doing is making sure that the oil soaks into all of the fibers, making sure the clutch is ready to go when it's time to run it. Let's get the clutch installed next. You got the washer that's gonna slide over the main shaft there and seat right up against the bearing. And then I'm also just gonna apply some assembly lube onto that main shaft there. And then the sleeve, apply some assembly lube to the outside. You can do a little bit on the inside as well. And then you're gonna slide that over the main shaft. Put a little bit more assembly lube on there. And then for the 94 and up models, you've got two roller bearings. So for this build, I got a Hinton clutch basket. Same thing with your OEM basket. This gear here is gonna mesh with the idler gear and then the main big gear is gonna mesh with the primary drive gear. So you'll have to work it a little bit, but that should slide right on. So when you rotate the clutch, the primary drive gear, the Kickstarter and the idler gear should all move together. Next, we got the thick thrust washer. I'm gonna throw a little bit of assembly lube here on the um, splines. And then we have the inner clutch hub and that's gonna go on the splines of the main shaft. And that'll seat up against that thrust washer. Next up is the spline washer that's gonna be installed onto that main shaft as well. Followed by the clutch nut which you will hand tighten down. I'm gonna use this Tusk clutch holding tool. I'll link it in my description below as well with all the tools that I use. Clamp that down on the inner basket and we're gonna to torque this clutch nut to 72 foot pounds. After getting that nut torqued down, you'll see there's actually three stake points on this nut here. Actually, there's a few up here, but you'll use a punch and a hammer to just punch those three stake points, being careful not to hit the main shaft when you do this. Now it's time to get the friction plates installed, which have been soaking in oil for 12 hours, as well as the steels. Now with these hints and plates, you'll notice here that they actually have a blue marking and then some red markings here. So the blue marking will go in first, and then there's also a blue marking that will go last. So those blue marking plates will sandwich the other plates. So it's pretty much a friction plate followed by a steel. On the steels here, there is a flat side and a curved side. You're gonna install the steels with the flat side facing out. So again, blue marking is gonna be the first one to be installed. And you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that the steel plates are oiled up as well. And then again, the flat, the rough side, the flat side is gonna be facing out. So after alternating steel and fiber, you've got the last one marked blue and we'll install that one right on there. Before we get the main push rod installed, we're gonna install the clutch release arm. So there's the gap here in the clutch release arm. We wanna make sure that points to the other side of the motor. I'm just gonna lube that up with some gear oil and then you can just drop that in. Next up is the push rod here. Go ahead and lubricate both of the shoulders. It doesn't matter which way you install it, they're both the same. And then when you operate the clutch arm on the other side, you should see the push rod moving in and out. Next up, we got the push rod holder assembly. Go ahead and get the bearing installed into the pressure plate. That should just slide right in there. Then lubricate the washer as well as the surface of the push rod holder here. Install the washer onto the push rod holder and then get the push rod holder installed on the end of the push rod. And that will bottom right out into the main shaft. And then you can go ahead and get the pressure plate installed. 
Now the pressure plate should sit flush against that last friction plate. If it doesn't, take it apart because something is definitely wrong. And then you can go ahead and get the clutch springs and bolts installed. Take the time to get them all snug down first and then get them torqued down to 78 inch pounds. So we've got the inner clutch cover next to set up. We've got a couple seals and bearings to get pressed into here. And then we got to set up the exhaust governor and the um, water pump. So we're going to start with the Kickstarter seal right here. And I've got a, the same size socket to fit that outer race. And we'll just gently tap it in until it seats. Then I had the exhaust governor bearing and the water pump bearing and the freezer for a little bit. So we're just gonna get those easily installed with a hammer and old socket. Go ahead and throw some assembly lube on those as well. Next up for the water pump here, there's an oil seal and the water seal. The oil seal is the bigger one and it gets stalled with the shallow end facing down against the bearing where the more concave or deeper part faces up. It's the opposite of how you would think it's installed. And then same with the water seal as well, flat end facing down and that's how it's going to be installed. Throw a little grease in that seal. And you should be able to start that oil seal pretty good. And then otherwise, just find something that's the same size as that outer lip and gently tap it against the bearing. Careful not to butt up the oil seal right against the bearing too much because it could stop the bearing from turning. So tap it in nice and slowly and check to make sure the bearing still spins as you get deeper. Go ahead and get that oil seal pressed in there as well. It should be installed about a half a millimeter below the side of the case here. Then flip the case over, throw a little grease on the water pump shaft there. And you're going to insert the shaft through the bearing and just kind of spin it when you put it through there to prevent damage to the lips of the seals. Okay, for this rebuild, we've got a Boyson water pump impeller, basically a bigger impeller to keep the engine running cooler to push more coolant through. So you've got the screw, you're gonna push the screw through the impeller, and then there's a washer here that you're gonna put on the back of the screw, and then you'll get that screwed on to the end of the water pump gear. And then little trick, I just installed the inner clutch cover onto the case here so the water pump gear could go against the primary gear and we'll just get that torque down to 61 inch pounds. Next up is the governor shafts. The actual exhaust governor itself, I never took it apart. I don't see a reason to unless your bike was in a box and it's really, really dirty. So I kept that clean when I took it apart. So first up, we'll get the seal in, throw some assembly lube on that, and then you can just push that seal into the case. So with the shaft itself here, just put a little bit of assembly lube, slide that into that inner clutch cover there. We'll dab some blue Loctite on those bolts. I just made a puddle of it. And then it's easier just to put the bolt in the Allen wrench through the governor lever and get those screwed onto the shaft. Now to torque these down, it's 35 inch pounds. I'm just gonna tighten these down snug because I don't have the correct Allen size to go on the torque wrench. Then with the shaft in, go ahead and flip the case over. And you've got this tiny pin here that you're gonna shove right into this hole, making sure it seats all the way down. And then you can go ahead and screw that Phillips head screw in. Now don't go cranking on it to tighten it down because you can strip it out pretty easily. Just make sure it's pretty snug. And then just make sure that whole governor shaft assembly is moving smoothly. Time to install the exhaust valve governor. So the arm here on the shaft is gonna get installed into the slot here on the governor. So you kind of open up the governor, throw the governor on into the shaft, and then at the same time, push the governor into the bearing as well as pulling up on this governor shaft and it should snap right into place. And you just wanna make sure that's spinning freely like that. And now when you go to install this cover on the crankcase, you want this bar here to be parallel with the governor shaft. So a couple things quick here. We got two dowel pins, one here, one there. We're gonna install a little bit of anti-seize on those pins. Then we'll just clean up the gasket surface. Got a little contact cleaner on a rag, spray it on there, and just make sure, especially down where the clutch is, that there's no oil on the crankcase. And then before I throw the gasket on, what I like to do is you can actually just paint a little bit of grease on the gasket mating surface. Just helps the gasket stick in place a little bit better when you go to put that inner clutch cover on and it just helps seal for air. Okay, we're gonna follow that up with a fresh Pro-X gasket, making sure it goes around the pins. All right, then we can go ahead and get that inner clutch cover installed. Now you might have to rotate the gears a little bit to get the water pump gear on the primary drive lined up 
Then just go around and double check to make sure that everything is sitting flush against the case. So once again, we got brand new nickel bolts thanks to spec bolt and a little trick as well. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of grease on those bolts because again, that will help air, if anything, from getting into those parts of the cases. Throw all the bolts in around the case. And then this long bolt actually goes right here, but it's not gonna go on until you got the clutch cover on there. Get all these bolts snug down, and then what you'll do is torque them in a crisscross pattern again to the 78 inch pounds. Okay, next up we got the Boyson water pump cover. We'll install both of the pins, the gasket, then the cover itself, and you'll torque those three bolts down to 78 inch pounds again. And then finally with the clutch cover, I've got this ultra, ultra rare magnesium pro circuit clutch cover that we're gonna put on there. So we're gonna do the same thing. We've got the two pins, one here and one there. Then we've got the fresh Pro X gasket, and then we'll install the clutch cover bolts. Again, tighten these down in a crisscross pattern to 78 inch pounds. And then finally here, we got the oil weep hole. And there we have the right side of the engine, all buttoned up. Man, really loving that Pro Circuit cover on there. And those nickel plated spec bolts really make a huge difference. All right, I've got the engine now flipped around. We're gonna work on the stator plate and the flywheel. So I've cleaned the stator plate, ready to go. What I would suggest is cleaning the connector here with Maxima Contact Cleaner. And just make sure that the stator itself is just cleaned up with the contact cleaner as well. Now, right here on the stator, you'll see three lines. So that's gonna be your timing. When I took the bike off, the center line here was actually matched with the notch in the case. So when we put the stator on, just make sure you match that mark or wherever you had it when you last took it off. So the stator is just gonna fit over the crankshaft there. Then to get these screws installed, I actually have a JIS screwdriver. These screws have a tendency to strip out pretty easily if you don't use the correct screwdriver. The Japanese bit is meant to fit in the Japanese screws on these bikes. So if you don't have one of these, I highly suggest you grabbing one. I'll leave it linked in my description below. You have less of a chance at stripping out these bolts while working on these Japanese bikes. So I've got all three bolts in. Now I'm just gonna work on that timing. And right there, I'll match that center line with the notch in the case. And then you can go ahead and get these bolts snug down. I don't have the torque spec for them, but just use your good judgment. You don't want them extremely tight because then, like I said, you could chance stripping out the bolt heads. So before we go ahead and put the stator plate on, let's go ahead and put the Woodruff key on. This is kind of like the lock for the flywheel. So if you haven't, just rotate the crankshaft to make sure the slot for the Woodruff key is facing straight up. Slide that into the slot of the crankshaft there. So that's how it should really sit right in there, just like that. And then for the rubber grommet here, I just take a little bit of Yamabond gasket sealer. So that helps seal it to the case. Then just wipe off any excess that might have gotten on there as well. Next up, we got the flywheel. You've got the slot in the flywheel. You wanna make sure you line that up with the Woodruff key. Make sure the front section of this Woodruff key is kind of facing down. And then before putting it on, make sure you don't have any washers or bolts stuck in there because a flying around washer and bolt could damage the stator because this thing is magnetic. So go ahead and line up the flywheel. There we go. And then that should slide on fairly easily there. You shouldn't have a problem. Double check to see if the Woodruff key fell off. So just hold the crank and then just make sure you can't move it and you should be good. And then throw the flywheel nut on there. The Tusk clutch holding tool, unfortunately these two prongs will not fit in the holes. In order to hold the flywheel down to torque the flywheel nut, what we'll do, we'll have to wait until we get the top end installed. Install the Staley piston stop, which will then make the piston stop in the top of the cylinder there, and then we'll be able to go torque that back down. So let's not forget to tighten this flywheel nut at the end of the build. Okay, so before throwing the cylinder and everything on top, we need to put the studs in now. So instead of using the two nut method, which I'm completely done with, I ended up grabbing a stud remover and an installation kit from Tusk. I had a lot of trouble taking these bolts out. So what we're gonna do is just throw a little bit of Maxima waterproof grease on the end of these bolts. Now there's two ends. There's one with this kind of tapered end, and then there's one with now. The tapered end is the side that we're gonna be installing into the engine itself. 
Now, I had to buy a brand new one because I bent up the one, one of these coming out of the engine prior, but if you hadn't replaced the stud bolts, then you have, there's a little dimple signifying the top of the bolt. The two taller ones are gonna go in the rear of the engine, and then the two shorter ones are gonna go in the front of the engine. Now, there's a couple options for these base studs. You've got the M10 by 125, and there's actually a little ball bearing in there. Get that screwed on to the cylinder stud itself and that'll bottom out against the nut. And then if you want to, you can go ahead and then use that Allen to tighten down. Then with a 17 mil socket, go ahead and get the stud nice and snug. And then get these things torqued down to 10 foot pounds. Also on the right side of the engine, you've got two locating pins. I'm just gonna grease these up with some waterproof grease as well on both the inside and out. And then we'll just slide those in, shove them into the case like that. But that's gonna be a wrap on this video. A part two of a three-part engine rebuild series for the Kawasaki KX250. In this video, we talked about the right side of the engine, getting the shifting mechanism installed with the shift shaft, the idler gear, the kickstart mechanism, the primary gear, the full Henson clutch install, the Boyson water pump impeller, as well as the left side of the engine, including the ignition and the flywheel. In part three, we're going to talk about the correct way to install the power valves into the cylinder, top end prep, piston and ring installation, cylinder installation, as well as getting the cylinder head installed. I also did some cool things to the cylinder to make it run that much better. I greatly appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. But I look forward to seeing you in part three of this engine rebuild series. As always, ride hard, be safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.